The past year was incredibly interesting for smart home tech. I know because I test, review, and offer tutorials on this stuff every day. In 2024, we finally saw Matter devices begin to multiply in number, albeit not without limitations. Wi-Fi 7 started making its way into people's homes, offering a theoretical maximum speed of 46 gigabits per second, which is nuts. Robot vacuum started to get really smart with advanced object recognition, climbing abilities, and docks that connect to your home's water line for hands-free mopping. And we saw the initial convergence of smart homes and generative AI. But what can you expect for 2025 and how will any of this benefit you? I'm going to offer five predictions for smart home tech in 2025. These are things that I expect we'll start to see and why it might matter to you. If you're new here, I'm Michael Lean and I cover how tech can make you more productive, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. People have been able to control their smart homes by voice for a decade, but it required sending all of your data to the cloud. In just the past couple of years, open source and community-driven projects began to allow people to build local voice assistants across many languages. This way, your voice requests remained local and private. But not everyone is up for tinkering with ESP32 chips and writing Docker commands, so the reach has likely been limited. Well, just recently, Home Assistant, an open source home automation platform, released its own voice hardware. It's called Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, and yes, I recorded this section separately right after the launch announcement. Home Assistant Voice is a little device built to process your voice requests. It's packed with a couple microphones, a speaker, a scroll wheel, a button, and an LED ring. Unlike existing smart speakers from Amazon, Apple, and Google, which send all of your voice requests to the cloud, Home Assistant Voice gives you the option for local processing, so what you say stays in your home. If you're running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, you may find it's a bit slow to process your voice commands though. Upgrading your Home Assistant server to an N100 mini PC should process your request in about one second. Or you can subscribe to Home Assistant Cloud for a similar fast response time. The physical button and LED ring on the device are programmable. For example, the LED ring can remind you to take out the trash, or the button could trigger an automation like telling the robot vacuum to clean the kitchen. But don't expect this to replace your existing smart speakers just yet. I've already ordered one for testing and we'll do an entire video review soon, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. In 2025, I expect the use of open source voice assistants to meaningfully grow thanks to new hardware and software options that make it easier to get started with local voice. I know I can't wait to test this out in my smart home. If you're tired of cloud-based voice assistants saying, by the way, let me know in the comments. Most smart home commands are simple requests. Turn on the light, turn off the light. Today's voice assistants can easily handle such commands. But what about more complex requests that reflect how you naturally talk? For example, you might say, turn off the living room lamp, set the thermostat to away mode, and open the garage door as you head out the door. Or, it's too dark in here. Or, how many lights are on? And what time was someone last seen at the front door? While voice assistants might struggle with these types of requests, LLMs can handle them really well. LLMs are generally better at interpreting natural language and are more knowledgeable than the voice assistants we've been using. But it would be too much cognitive load for you as the user to think of your request evaluate if it's best answered by a voice assistant or LLM, and then direct your query to the appropriate one. No one wants that. In 2025, I expect it will become the norm for voice requests to be sent to a local voice assistant and only fall back to an LLM for more complex requests that are not understood by the assistant. The signs of this are already underway. Apple intelligence updates in iOS 18.2 included an integration with ChatGPT. This allowed Siri to continue answering user requests, but also access ChatGPT 
for certain types or more complex requests. And Home Assistant has started to move in a similar direction. If you've already been using this, let me know in the comments what you think of it. While LLMs like ChatGPT or Google Gemini are incredibly powerful, they do require you to send your data to the cloud. Much like local voice assistants, there are options for running an LLM locally in your home. You could use something like Olama, which is a free open source tool that lets you create and run your own LLMs. To do this though, you will need dedicated hardware that can support it, and that kind of constant power will consume more of your home's electricity. But it would allow you to keep your data local and private. In 2025, I don't expect LLMs to go mainstream, but I do expect to see a surge in their usage among DIY enthusiasts. Let me know in the comments if that sounds like you and if it's something you'll be trying out. Over the past year, manufacturers big and small introduced an expanded range of presence detection sensors. For a while, people had to rely on PIR motion sensors to trigger a smart home automation based on someone entering a room. While good at that, PIR motion sensors aren't so smart at knowing if you are still in a room when you are relatively still. The gradual proliferation of millimeter wave sensors changed this and finally made it possible to create reliable automations as simple as turning off the lights, confident that no one remains in the room. In 2025, I expect millimeter wave based presence detection to inch closer to a prerequisite for any smart home, rather than primarily an implementation by the enthusiast crowd. I expect Matter to play a role here with Matter compatible sensors, bringing presence detection further beyond Home Assistant to those using Amazon, Apple, and Google smart home platforms. But that's not to say I'm overly optimistic about Matter. Matter was announced in 2019 with the initial release appearing in 2022. It promised to be a manufacturer independent connection standard for the smart home with Matter over Wi-Fi and Matter over Thread options. But Matter has been troubled by delays, feature gaps, and setup and connectivity issues. Over the course of 2023 and 2024, we saw the publication of Matter 1.1.2.3 and .4 specifications. Those releases expanded support for different device types like household appliances and robot vacuums and made it possible to track energy consumption. Well, sort of. Just because a new version of Matter is released doesn't mean you can access it. Smart home platforms like Amazon, Apple, and Google must adopt each new release before you'll see the benefits. For example, Matter 1.3 was released in May of 2024 and it promised support for robot vacuums. But nine months later, we still don't have this for Apple HomeKit. Most frustrating, at least to me, is that connecting your smart home device via Matter almost always requires trade-offs. You often get access to fewer features or controls than if you had connected the device some other way. I'm not sure how much of this has to do with the technical architecture complexities versus deliberate feature gatekeeping by manufacturers. In 2025, I don't think this will get much better, and I expect Matter will continue to fall short of a vision that simplifies and improves your overall smart home. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been with smart home devices using Matter. Common themes across my predictions concern local versus cloud-based AI and implications for your data and privacy. It's generally good to proceed with caution whenever your data may be used in ways outside of your control, but overall, I'm excited and optimistic about the emerging possibilities for Gen AI and LLMs in your smart home. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this and any smart home tech predictions of your own. If you're interested in how I'm using LLMs to analyze my camera images in Home Assistant, I'll leave a link for that to check out. There are links in the description for all the smart home tech I use. I appreciate it when you use those links since I may earn a small commission at no additional cost to you. If you're interested in supporting this channel further, consider becoming a member using the links in the description or picking up some of my smart home merch. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Alexa, turn off the dining room lights. Okay, by the way, I have a routine to tell you the weather and give you traffic information each morning. Would you like to enable that?